In the world of multiple sclerosis, B cell depleting drugs like Ocrevus, Kesempta, Rituximab, and Ublituximab are likely to be some of the most effective medicines used to treat the disease. How exactly do they work? What exactly does a B cell depleter like Ocrevus do? I'm going to explain that in this video. Now don't turn away because all of that starts right now. Howdy! Thanks for learning about MS with me, Aaron Boster. I'm excited to share with you in this video exactly how B-cell medicines work to treat multiple sclerosis. Now, if we take a few steps back, when I was in training in medical school, they taught us that MS only involved T-cells. They were wrong. It turns out that the B-cells, which are part of the humoral component to the immune system, play a very significant role in causing damage in MS. And B-cell depleting agents, medicines like Ocrevus or Ocrelizumab, Kesempta, also called Ufatumumab, Rituxan, called Rituximab, I didn't make up these names. These medicines, which deplete B-cells, are extremely effective in helping treat multiple sclerosis. So in this video, I'm going to break down exactly how they work. Let's start the discussion by explaining what the hey hey is a B-cell. So we talk about B-cell depleters. Let's make sure that we understand what exactly is a B-cell. So it's part of the immune system. Our immune system has two halves, if you will. The innate immune system, which we're not going to be talking about very much today, and the adaptive immune system. Now, if you're curious about the innate immune system, I have made videos on the topic, so I'll throw a link up above and you can check that out. But focusing our discussion on the adaptive immune response, this is uh, the part of our immune response which we have studied the most and which we understand how to manipulate the most as it relates to helping MS, which is good. Now, the adaptive immune response is called adaptive because it can learn things. When the adaptive immune cells are first born, they're, they're not sure what they want to do when they grow up. They're literally undifferentiated, like a college freshman. And as they mature, these, uh, these immune cells, they evolve into the adaptive response, specifically targeting particular bad guys. So, for example, the adaptive cells might learn to identify and attack chickenpox. And those particular cells, that's all they do. There may be other adaptive cells that evolve and mature specifically to identify, say, tuberculosis. And so your adaptive immune response uh, is something that learns and evolves over time. Now, the adaptive immune response has two halves as well. There are the T cells and the B cells. And MS, we've been talking about T cells for 20, 30 years. We know that the T cells are the ones that actually attack your myelin and damage your nervous system. They're actually doing the attack. But what we didn't understand until recently, all things considered, was the role that B cells played. So let's talk about B and T cells. Now, these adaptive immune cells are born in the bone marrow. That's where they start, and they don't know what they want to do. And when they get a little older, some of the cells leave the bone marrow and they travel up in the neck to the thymus. And in the thymus, they mature. And when you mature in the thymus, you're called a T cell, T for thymus. Some of the cells stay in the bone marrow until they're all done growing up. They fully mature in the bone marrow, B for bone marrow. So B cells are a cell in the immune system part of the adaptive immune system, the B and T cells, and they're cells that fully mature in the bone marrow. That's what B cells are. Now, what do B cells do? Well, B cells have several different roles in the immune system, and it's outside the scope of this discussion to go over all of them. But just to share the relevant ones, one of the things B cells do is they make antibodies. So you've heard of antibodies for example, when you get a vaccine, you're showing your B cells the target and then a special kind of B cell called a plasma cell makes a bunch of antibodies. In that way, if later you see that infection, your B cells have made antibodies against the infection and you can pounce on it. Ooh, real quick before we go on, do me a favor. If you like this video, please give it a thumbs up. And if you haven't yet subscribed to the channel, please consider doing so. Those two actions teach the YouTube algorithm that you really like this content and help push it out 
so more people impacted by MS can benefit. Thank you. Another thing that B cells do a lot of is they get T cells riled up to go fight. It's called co-stimulation. And this is the aspect of B cell biology that we're trying to mess with when we're trying to help people impacted by MS. So to explain this B cell T cell relationship in MS, I'm going to use an analogy from way back when I was in high school. So I grew up uh, in a suburb of Columbus, Ohio, and it was a very overcrowded, large high school. And it was really crowded in the hallways. And if two young men bumped into each other in the hallway, where I came from, there was only one way to settle that terrible dispute. You would meet behind B building at 3.30 to beat the crap out of each other. I attended some of these social functions and I noticed something. No young pugilist shows up to defend his honor without six of his buddies behind him. And what do those buddies do? They egg him on, they get him riled up. They say things like, go ahead, man, whoop his butt. I got you, I'll hold your book bag. Hey, if he hits you, I'll hit him. And they sort of get the young man all riled up. And then the two men may go and they may punch each other a bit. Now, what happens if one of the two young high school guys show up to fight and he looks behind him and he doesn't have any friends? Well, he's not gonna fight. Suddenly, he's not all that interested. He's gonna go home. And in this analogy, the young man fighting, that's the T-cell. If the T-cell gets into the central compartment and gets adequately stimulated, it's going to attack you. But it can't do it without its friends, the B-cells. The B-cells are required to stimulate that T-cell, co-stimulate the T-cell to get it riled up so that it's adequately ready to attack. With B-cell depleting medicines, we literally kill the B-cells. So we kill all the guy's friends. So when the T-cell enters into the central compartment, brain and spinal cord, and it would attack you, it doesn't have the B-cell co-stimulation to go ahead and attack. In the absence of the friends, the B-cells, the T-cell is not able to attack you. And so it's really fascinating that by taking a medicine that depletes the B-cells, we remove the cells that are needed to stimulate the T-cells to beat you up. It turns out to be very, very effective, which is kind of awesome. Now, how exactly do these B-cell depleters deplete B-cells? What do they do? So all of these B-cell depleting medicines, Ocrevus, Casempta, Rituxan, these medicines are monoclonal antibodies. So a monoclonal antibody is like a biologic key. So imagine I'm holding a key here. This is my invisible prop. And I could ask the hypothetical, how many doors does this key open? And the answer should be one. The key is very, very specific. It only fits in one door. So if I uh, randomly walked around my neighborhood putting my key in other people's doors, it wouldn't open any of them. It would only open my door. And a B cell depleter like Ocrevus is a biologic key. It's actually an engineered antibody. In a lab, they make an antibody. And the antibody binds very, very specifically to adult B cells. And so you can think of it as a key that only fits the lock of an adult B cell. And so if you take one of these B cell depleters and you put it in the human body and it floats around the human body, it literally cannot see any cells in the body except adult B cells. And so it'll float past all the other cells. But when this smart key, when this biologic key, when this antibody sees a B cell, it can bind to it. And when it binds to it, it tags it for death. It calls over its friend's complement, which come in and make the B cell die. And so it will deplete adult B cells. Now, why do I keep saying adult B cells? Because it doesn't affect the stem cells. The stem cells will grow back up. And that's why we take B cell depleters with a frequency. Medicines like Ocrevus and Rituxan, we take every six months because it takes six months for those cells to grow back. Kisemta is an injection you give yourself once a month. And so in both cases, we're constantly trying to deplete the B cells. If you stop the therapy, all your B cells will eventually grow back because the stem cells have not been affected. River. Hi, baby girl. Do you want to say hi to the internet? Say howdy, howdy, hi. You're a good baby girl. Also, another really, really important point. The B cells that make antibodies, the ones that fight off viruses like COVID, those are called plasma cells. And B cell depleters do not see plasma cells. 
plasma cells evolve in a manner so that the B cell depleter, like Ocrevus, can't see it. When you receive a B cell depleter, you don't lose your existing immunity. If you've had a chickenpox vaccine, and then later you start a B cell depleter, the plasma cells that fight chickenpox don't go away. They're not depleted, and so you maintain that immunity. And that means it's really important that we get all of our vaccines up to date before we start B cell depletion. B cell depleting medicines are some of the most effective medicines that I've used to treat multiple sclerosis. They're fascinating and it's my hope that this video helps you better understand how they work. If you would like to understand how other MS medicines work, click the video that's on your screen right now. And until my next Monday morning video, or until the next time I see you on a monthly live stream, or even better yet, the next time I see you at the Boster Center for MS, this is Aaron Boster saying be safe and take care.